Good morning. It's a beautiful day here in the cloud forest. This is trying pace by Biden. It doesn't. Now, we're at about 7,000 feet, maybe 6,500 feet. It got chilly as hell last night. Okay, I was shivering in my sleeping bag. But it probably got down to like 40 degrees. Okay. But uh, start the warm up now. Sun's out. Uh, you know, keep in mind, we're at about 16 degrees north latitude here. But we are high up. So it's a much different climate than you would get down below like i like i've been saying it's, it's got more like the uh, the climate of san francisco okay or like coastal northern california maybe even mendocino a little bit chillier but uh you could see the dominant tree here is this pinus occidentalis this endemic pine also got uh many members of uh the asteraceae here like this guy you could see also got a uh, this species of agave the geology here is uh, calcium carbonate. It's called karstic limestone. So it erodes in a particular fashion. Okay, gets rather rough and abrasive. Look at this beautiful agave. Look how big that fucker is. And then, of course, this uh, kind of small tree or large shrub, whatever you want to call it, that we got over here is a species in the silk tassel family. This is a garia. This is the endemic garia to the island of Hispaniola, garia fadinii. Look at this fern. Looks like a tongue fern. Almost looks like some kind of a lapoglossum. Look what's going on with the spores right there. Holy shit. Lots of endemics. Now, why are these mountains here? Well, that would be because of tectonic forces. Okay? The, uh, we're on a Caribbean plate right now, and a Caribbean plate is uh, what you would call a tectonic clusterfuck. You got subduction zones to the east, subduction zones to the west, subduction zones to the south, and then, of course, you got a large strike slip or transform fault to the north, where the Caribbean plate is moving east, so we're moving east, and Cuba, which is on a North American plate, is moving west. Okay, it's a rather long uh, transform fault. Nothing is nothing like the San Andreas, not that long, but it is long. So that's why you get a lot of earthquakes here. There's also been a history of volcanism. Uh, you can see what we're on now is just, you know, old, uh, you know, marine sedimentary rock, the calcium carbonates, the limestones. But this tectonic soup, uh, of course, uh, has created some uplift, okay? These mounds were, were likely uplifted by uh, a subducting plate, uh, you know, who knows when, uh, diving beneath, uh, you know, another oceanic plate. So you get what's called an island arc. It's just a kind of an island arc mountain, again, with probably lots of volcanism, but of course, none in the immediate vicinity. Let's take a look at this... Uh, Species of Baconia, a tree poppy. There's the ovaries right there. You can see they got the uh, stigma up top. These are still uh, these are still receptive. Now these are bird dispersed. Those stigmas will eventually fall off, and then you got the little fruit right there. There's the leaves. Look at the underside. That's where the magic is right there. Look at that venation. Gold veins, white indumentum. Let's take, let's take a look uh, up this hill, see what's going on up there. Look, he's got all kinds of lichen and whatnot growing on his damn stem. Oh, yeah. You know, there's some bird that was singing here, and he, he was doing it at dusk. He was doing it through the night, and now he's doing it in the morning, too. It sounds kind of like one of those old... Uh, you know, uh, lawsuit-prone uh, metal uh, merry-go-rounds. You know, like a playground from the 70s or 80s. You know, but it hasn't been oiled in a while. It's all rusty and whatnot. It sounds kind of like, you know, screeching metal. It's beautiful in its own way, though. I mean, look at that guy. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this beautiful salvia. Look at that thing. Let's get closer. Let's take a look at the little flowers. Little tiny purple flowers. You got a purple calyx, kind of like a pink calyx, and then a purple flower. And then the leaves are just that uh, kind of chalky blue color. God damn, that's, that's something else. Bet it's an endemic. Because again, we're up here, we're basically on an island in the sky. 
This would not grow at lower elevations. It'd be much too hot for it. It's adapted to these cool, uh, these cool, chilly, humid conditions, much like uh, coastal Northern California. Got your opposite leaves, got a square stem, pink calyx, purple flowers. That's a stunner right there. So this whole this whole hillside is just covered in that salvia. You got a bunch of lichen right there. That's nice. What's this? Looks like a species of peperomia. Got your agave just coming straight out the uh, the rack. Just growing straight out that uh, karstic limestone. Got this odd species of grass everywhere as well. Well, what do we got here? Looks like an ericaceous bastard, perhaps. Hard to tell without flowers. See, you can see what I mean by karstic limestone. You can see how it dissolves. Leaves that particular texture and pattern to it. Look at that. Probably massive caves uh, beneath all this, of course. Same grass is everywhere. You see that? Very spiky, too. Almost looks like some kind of disticlus or something, but it's uh, very, very rough. So anyway, you know, the Amazon gets all the attention. The rainforest get all the attention. The equatorial lowland forest get all the attention because they're getting screwed. Indeed, they are getting screwed, uh, you know, getting turned into cattle, pasture, farmland, etc. Mainly because, you know, the current way that our species behaves is... Uh, you know, the whole world revolves around us. We kind of behave like a cancer. We grow without limit. Um, you know, of course, there were some of us, uh, certain cultures that didn't do that, that had a, a decent land ethic, but of course, the rest of us annihilated them. So, uh, you know, our closest relatives are chimps, so it makes sense. Look at this guy. Oh, that's nice. Look at it. The, the texture and the color on some of these leaves is fantastic. That velvety shit. Okay? So anyway, as I was saying, you know, the... The, the uh, Amazon gets all the attention. The rainforest get all the attention. Rainforest of Borneo getting cleared for palm plantations. Rainforest of the Amazon getting cleared for the fucking cattle and whatnot. The cloud forests don't get enough attention, though. And these are one of the most threatened habitats that exist. And not a lot of people even know that they do exist. Not a lot of people know that when you take your significant altitude and tectonic uplift and bring it to lower latitudes, you get some wild shit. You get room for a lot of weird speciation to occur. You get a habitat where it doesn't really freeze, but again, it also doesn't really uh, ever get too hot. So, uh, you know, evolution can work wonders, as you see here. You know, I regret comparing that bird's call to a rusty playground swing from the 80s, because it doesn't. It's so much more beautiful than that. I, mean, I don't think you can hear him. He's, he's over there somewhere. Anyway, look, we got a species of cap. Nice species of comp. Again, this would probably do much better in coastal California than it would do here. This is a this is not going to be adapted to lowland climates. Opposite leaves, relatively uh, glossy and somewhat glandular. Too bad we didn't catch it in flower. There's all the seeds right there, growing on a karstic limestone. Over here, it seems we got uh, this. Really is some treacherous terrain. Look at the fruits on this guy. Though alternate leaves. Got somewhat of a uh, dente margin there. R rather glabrous and glassy. Just uh, coming up from, looks like he's got a little burrow right there. See, there's there's more of his berries. Ugh, tastes terrible though. You could, you could taste stuff. You could, you could put it in your mouth as long as you don't swallow it. My friend Alan does that with some uh, poisonous mushrooms. And then, of course, people always get mad at him when he tells people that because, you know, there's always going to be some jackets that can eat it. But he assumes no responsibility. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Another silver-leafed composite. Some of them get the, that intense white farina. Intense white Dennis farina, that intense white waxy covering. It's, but it kind of turns into scales, too. It's like scales and trichomes and what the shit. Love to catch it flowering, but uh seems to be the wrong time of year for it. Oh, yeah, there's that. There's that comp flowering. See that composite right there? Oh, it's got, it's got ligules. It's got rays. Tiny little flowers, though. And that uh, abaxial surface is a 
bright white. Beautiful goddamn plant at axial surface. It's mostly green, still got a photosynthesize, but it's covered in hairs. Look at that. Oh yeah, now we're, we're getting up into the pines. Beautiful Pinus occidentalis. This is a species of Baccarus, believe it or not. I mean, it kind of looks like it. You look at those leaves, they're all glandular. Got that particular texture to them. This one's not flowering. I seen some others uh, the other night. There's a old receptacle on her. Seen some last night that were flowering. But yeah, it's a species of coyote bush. Plants are dioecious. Sunflower family Asteraceae. Lots of composite diversity here. Look at this grass. You think that is? Huh? And another dominant plant here is uh, this bastard right here. You know, whatever it is, it's uh, it's it's wind pollinated. You could just see clouds of. See that? Wonder if it's in Fagales. Almost the uh, tiny little holly-like leaves. Of course, uh, each leaf uh, with a bunch of scales on it, scales and trichomes and what the shit. And those are the flowers. Presumably male flowers. Those tiny little red things that are just uh, coming right out the stem. Very interesting. Real interesting plant here. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a, there's a good money shot. She get money shots of that. See that? But this is, this is, you know, I mean, look at this. This is dominant here. I've seen like six or seven others of them. Big, big shrubs. Starting to warm up now. You know, I got to say that uh, cloud forest is probably my favorite type of habitat my favorite type of plant community after deserts it doesn't get any better than this never too hot never too cold always just perfect fucking smells great too ah And there's that fuchsia again. Doesn't get very tall, but uh, hummingbird pollinated, obviously. Oh, Grace evening primrose family. There's the leaves. Look, they got that uh, red tint, that red pigmentation to the distal lens of them. Styles hanging lower than the stamens, so as to avoid self-pollination. So conspicuous, especially if you're a hummingbird. Especially if you're a, a bird with a high metabolism that needs a... Uh, Needs the uh, intensive glucose diet. Isn't that the new diet fads? You get sick of people. I just wish people would shut the fuck up about their diet fads. Keto diet, carnivore diet, shut the fuck up. None of those ideas were your own. You need something to obsess over. I get it. You know, get a hobby. Just, uh, I don't want to hear about it. Oh, yeah. I can't escape it. I fucking hate this plant so much. The mullen. Mm, it's good for smoking. Mmm, yes. You can't escape. It's everywhere. It's one of the most prominent invasive plants in the world. <laughs> I fucking hate it. I especially hate it because other people seem to think it's beautiful. Yeah, probably it's beautiful in its native habitat, not fucking here. And of course, if you got a rich conifer forest, you're going to have a rich uh, mycorrhizal uh, situation going on in that soil and with that you're going to have some of the achlorophilus mycoheterotrophic orchids like this guy no idea what it he, what he is because uh, he's already gone to fruit but you could see he's got no leaves got no chlorophyll he's stealing all his uh, nutrients from fungi or maybe the fungi said it's okay maybe you know maybe they got a maybe they got something worked out they got a nice rapport sure would love to catch him in flower though probably uh perhaps an endemic huh probably Look at that, like a beacon in the night. So many plants have co-evolved with hummingbirds. So many plants in the neotropics, in the New World tropics, have co-evolved with hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are endemic to the Americas. Anytime you see a red tubular flower, if I can get through here without stabbing myself on this agave, anytime you see a red tubular flower, it's uh, pollinated by hummingbirds. Because insects don't even see, and at the, don't even pick up that, the, they're red. They don't even see it. You got, you got nectar up top there. Get a little hummer, go up there, stick his beak in there, get a dusting of pollen on his head, fly off to the next flower. 
course that the style's longer than those eight stamens, so as to avoid self-pollination. So many species of fuchsia in the Neotropics. It's opposed to the Paleotropics. You know, Europe, Asia, etc. The, the quote, old world tropics. But this guy's just sticking out like a flag, like a beacon in the night. Look at that guy. Look at that big red belly on this guy. Wonder if he's the one making that call I like so much. The rusty playground call. Look, here's that massive composite again with the uh, the fuzzy white leaves. Look at that. Look how just covered in, in wool. And then glossy beneath. Incredible. Look, here's a big one. Too bad we're not catching it in flower. Probably got yellow flowers. You can see they can get quite big. They got quite a uh, quite a trunk on them, at least for for an aster. Right here, you got a species of uh, Melastomataceae. It looks like. Look at all the damn berries. Oh. Should I taste one? Should I throw it in my mouth to see how it tastes? Flip those leaves over. Look, you got that wonderful golden golden velvet on the underside. Opposite leaves, glossy, ad axially, green, dark green and glossy, beautiful forest green and glossy, just like the Krylon color, and then a golden and golden velvet beneath. Forms a small tree, small tree or a large shrub, however you want to think of it. And all the pines are just draped in the usnea, draped in the lichen. The fruits actually taste pretty good. I doubt they're poisonous. Otherwise, they wouldn't uh, taste so sweet. Well, it's, <laughs> it's watch me keel over now. It's no, that's not a good indicator, but uh, just the most beautiful. I wonder what the flowers look like. Probably gorgeous. Just the most beautiful leaves. Look at it. So over there, you got the little rocky escarpments and whatnot. We're, we're pretty much near the top of the mountain. We're at 7,000 feet now. You got all kinds of agaves and whatnot growing over there they really like the rocks they really like i mean they really, they really like it anywhere and again this is a very uh well seemingly cold tolerant agave that probably wouldn't like it too hot probably wouldn't like it too hot in those lowland areas you got that uh that composite again just just draped in wool the damn q-tip plant and then uh you got a nice understory with all the uh Coraline lichen. Always a, always a pleasure to see. Seeing this same genus in New Caledonia. Look at that. Usni on everything. Pinus occidentalis. You got the Garius species, the silk tassel. Fedinii. That lichen is really just... Really just having a banger time. Oh, look at this guy. If I can manage to not get stabbed by this agave. Oh, okay, it's going right in my groin. Full frontal. Full frontal, silver form corollas. Five petals fused together like a little trumpet. Opposite leaves. And you got a nice, uh, of course, you got that velvet on the underside. Nice indumentum. Can hear the wind blowing through the pines. Gets the nice ambiance. Still got your baccarus everywhere. But uh, this guy's really, this guy's dominant here. One of the more dominant uh, plants along with the Garia. God, those, those undersides of those leaves are really something else. There's a the fruit, little woody capsule. Oh, yeah, look at this. Got a Eupatoriaceous bastard, Eupatoriae tribe, 
of Asteraceae, same uh, tribe as uh, Joe Pie Weed, which you get in the Midwest, Eupatorium, Brichelia, and Stevia. Look at those long ass styles. You'd know those long ass styles anywhere you've seen them. Leaves are glabrous, opposite. No hairs, no hairs. And then, of course, there's the seed. Easy to get around. Tiny seeds, big pappus. Blow around on a wind. Look at all those fucking agaves. They're so beautiful. Isn't that nice? Okay, we're dropping down a mountain a little bit. Still on that limestone, of course. And uh, this guy is starting to appear everywhere. Look at those bracts. Look at those big ass stipules. You got big ass stipules. I'm going to go with the uh, Cunoniaceae. Member of the Cunoniaceae. Let's see if I can get you some flowers. There's a there's a dried inflorescence, infructescence. But you can see some of these some of them are getting pretty big like that over there. That's the same uh, same plant. There's the flowers on it, guys. See the the branch on the left flowers haven't opened yet. Branch on the right, they're already open. Just about finishing up. Look at all those stamens, all those, all those white filaments. Pinnate leaf structure. Flip them over. What's he look like under there? Ah, oh, yeah. Look at all, look at the venation on that. Yeah, now, I, when I was a young lad growing up in a Chicago uh, metropolitan area, I had a friend. We used to call each other "you dumb prick." Uh, it's a term of endearment. Okay, I love this this guy dearly. Yeah, we were like brothers, but we'd always call each other, hey, you dumb prick. You know, it must be a Chicago thing. Anyway, I would never refer to this plant uh, in such a fashion. Well, we got a wonderful begonia species. Now, begonias are pretty amazing in their own way. They're in a f family, begoniaceae, only two genera in that family. Uh, one is all over the tropics, and then the other one, uh, it begins with an H. I forget the name of it. I'll put it, I'll put it in the fucking notes here. That one is endemic to Hawaii. They got this uh, very distinct leaf structure, almost kind of succulent. Look at the red margins. The red, excuse me, the red leaves, or red venation. Jesus Christ. Didn't have any coffee today. Didn't bring a stove. Okay, forgive me. There's the flowers. Plants are monoecious, okay, like a lot of conifers. What you're looking at are the female flowers, okay? So plants... Uh, Plants are monoecious. They got, they got male flowers, uh, unisexual flowers, but they got both male and female on the same same plant. You see, there's the over. You can see the ovary. That weird, uh, almost looks like some sort of maple samara, big red maple samara, uh, a subtendon to flower right there. But yeah, that's the stigma right there. And then right there, you got a male flower, quite different. Oh, he just fell off, and uh, no ovary. Who's stuck? You get a guy stuck in there? Anyway, this has been all over. Okay, but again, it's not up top. Not up top. Probably doesn't like it that cold. Look at how bright red that stem is. It's beautiful. There you go. Begonia, say everybody, the begonias. I knew this hippie, real nice guy, who used to just love begonias. Fucking love them. Wonder, I wonder if he was always blazed or what. I don't know. Good guy, though. Love, love this begonias. Another thing I forgot to mention is the uh, the male flowers on those begonias only have four petals and the females have five. See, there's the female. Okay, now we're dropping down a mountain enough. You're getting the, uh, you're getting the tree ferns. Oh, it looks like a Cyathea species. Perhaps Cyathea arborea. Still got the pines, but uh, it's getting a little warmer. Not as chilly. Dropped down about, I don't know, probably 900 feet. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm way off the mark. Maybe a lot more than that. But the forest composition is changing. Pretty interesting. These tree ferns, this is the first we've seen of them. They weren't up top. Magnificent bastards. Look at those guys. Boy, this fucking... Uh... Bamboo, this grass, whatever this shit is, really taking over. I'm guessing it's, uh, I'm guessing it's not native. It's just covering everything. Also smells like, uh, smells like fire. 
Oh, who's this? Oh, this is that fucking Salvia. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. Look, that same, that same Salvia is forming a tree over there. See all those red? Those are all the bracts that protect the calyx. See, so you got a yellow Corolla, green calyx. Just looks like your typical Salvia calyx, and you got these red bracts on either side. How much you want to bet this is an endemic? And, of course, opposite leaves. God damn. Look, oh, I can't get it. So there's like, I've seen like four or five different kinds of salvia in the last day and a half. Look at this. This grass is just choking out the forest. It's kind of a bummer. Just totally choking out the forest. Yeah, it looks like a member of the uh, Urticaceae, the nettle family. It's the uh, axile flowers. Sure got the leaf texture down, too. Red stems, though. Look at this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Looks almost like uh, Solanaceae. Here's the fruits up here. Just draping over. We've dropped down a mountain pretty significantly. And uh, now, you know, the land has been cleared. And you could just see uh, what I got a bunch of avocado fields up there. This was all forest, of course, at one point. But, uh... Oh, but, but uh, what are you going to do? I guess people got to eat. The more people there are, the more they got to eat. Especially, you know, poverty. We're, we're close to the border with Haiti. You know? People who can't feed themselves aren't going to give a shit about uh, preserving the land, and I, I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. I've never had to been, uh, you know, put in that uh, situation before. But uh, it's generally fucked all around, you know. It does lead to more uh, eradication of uh, biodiversity and more uh, forest destruction and more land clearance. God, this is fucked. So much land clearance. Look at that. This was all forest. I bet. Ten years ago. Okay, we stopped in the uh, avocado hell to check out. Uh, looks like we got a pretty interesting plant here. Opposite leaves, subparallel venation. Oh, it almost looks like a melastome, huh? You got the hairy stem too. Look at those damn anthers. Like little bananas. Exotic. Almost, uh, almost obscene. There's the, the fruit. You can see, still got the calyx on there. Oh, that's nice. So it looks like they got, uh, they're growing avocado, and then you got taro in the understory. It's kind of like permaculture, which would be cool, you know, but uh, this all used to be forest, so what are you going to do? and miles of avocado hell. Oh, all avocados. Been driving for like two or three miles now. So it's all fucking avocados. And I bet if I come back in 10 years, they'll be even further up the mountain. Seen this, uh, <laughs> seen this in so many places. And of course, with the human agriculture comes the invasive species. R.I.P. Cloud Forest. Seen this in the cloud forest of Oaxaca. I've seen it in the cloud forest of Chiapas. Your time is limited. Okay, so a lot of people aren't familiar with the family Gesneriaceae. It's in the order Lamiales, the order of Salvias. I mean, yeah, you can forgive them for that. They're normally a lower latitude uh, family, uh, but here's one of them. See, the whole family's just covered in those uh, almost urticating hairs. Stiff, hispid hairs. Look at the underside of that leaf. Prominent venation. And there's the inflorescence, just looking like a... a little, just holding a bunch of little orange mouths. See the anthers? See the orange style? And then here's the fruit. 
And inside that fruit, the seeds are tiny, almost like monkey flower seeds. So I can get some. Oh, there's a couple. See that? They're like dust. Oh, there's, see, there's a bunch coming out right now. See that? So normally, if, uh, you know, no one's squeezing them, they just they get enough time, they mature, they dry out, they dehiss. They just open up like that, dumping all their little seeds out. I think this guy's getting ready to go off. You can see they've just formed this uh, this wall. This wall of green mixed in with this uh, composite, probably a liabum. They're getting upwards of 10, 12 feet tall. Gesneriaceae. We got a melastome. Melastomataceae. Notice the subparallel of an Aceae. You got those three prominent veins right there. Aceae, I guess technically five. You got two on the outer, outer part right there. And then those, uh, those dongs, those, you know, conspicuous yellow anthers just hanging off. Here's what the fruit looks like. Little capsule. Dries out, splits open, tons of tiny seeds inside. Look at the underside. Oh, my God. That's nice. Yellow indumentum. Yellow velvet. She wore yellow velvet. Hey, you prick, you don't like it when I sing? You know, I can't afford licensing costs for, you know, a lot of this music they're playing nowadays. So I gotta just got to make it up myself. Rather large leaves. And, uh, seems like it's a... Uh, can be a large, uh, large tree. There's another one uh, back there. Melastomataceae is that family there. Lots of diversity. Again, lots of uh, endemic melastomes on this island. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Almost looks like a kind of piper. Quite a distinct flower right there. Look, he's got the bracts too. You get the bracts. Look at the look at the nodes. Very distinct. Very distinct stem. Okay, so now, now they're doing bananas. We're low enough now that uh, you got the uh, Musa can grow. These are all, of course, the same clone. But, uh, you know, the, the, the idea that you should take away with is that, you know, poverty is pretty bad for the environment. That's why it's important to bring people up. All right, even if you're just a total selfish prick lacking in the most uh, elementary basics of uh, compassion, you still want to bring people up. All right, you bring people up. You bring them out of poverty, you're going to have less crime, you're going to have less, less destruction of the shit you like, etc. Okay, and of course there's just the whole human compassion thing too, don't you want people to have the same quality of life you got? Huh? And, uh, you know, of course, you some people might say that this is bringing people up, but, uh, you know, I have, I have a feeling that there's a boss in charge of all this, and he's, uh, you know, he's the one making most of the money. You know, I, I, doubt, I doubt it's a collective. Okay, and of course there's ways to, you know, perform agriculture and, uh, you know, create a product without destroying uh, everything, uh, without destroying the fucking biodiversity of uh, organisms that took uh, millions of years to evolve. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Go fuck yourself. Bye.